where he had where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up and read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all the Lord witnessed to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever he had, whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you, truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months. And there was a great famine throughout all the land, but to none of them was Elijah sent except his Zarephath in the region of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah, Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. So all those in the synagogue, when they had heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city. And they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Thank you very much. Our theme for today, everyone, is now is the time for mercy. Now is the time for mercy. And we've just listened to, I hope, a story from the Bible that is familiar to you, where Jesus first began his public ministry. So he goes into his hometown of Nazareth. He goes to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as we go to church on Sunday, the Lord's Day. He goes in there and he reads as we heard from the prophet Isaiah. And then we heard those lovely words about the prophecy. I have anointed you. I have sent you to be, bring good news to the poor, release the captives, sight to the blind, um, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. So Jesus says to the people, these words, those words of Isaiah, and now being fulfilled in your presence. Now. So Isaiah talked hundreds of years before. And Jesus is standing in his hometown, in his own synagogue, where he grew up as a boy. He says, now, at this moment, this prophecy is being fulfilled. And what the people who inside the synagogue then did, they went, oh wow, this is all happening now. This is good. However, they went backwards. You remember the story carefully? They said, well, you, why don't you do what you've been doing elsewhere? for us. So they wanted to go backwards to something else. They lost the focus on the now. And then Jesus, they, they get angry with Jesus. Because he, he sort of indicates to them, not ready for the now. Not ready for the now. Verse Jesus says, it, it, it's not with it. My friends from the Nazareth synagogue, the ones inside the synagogue. And so they get angry. They take him out. They're going to kill him. They're going to throw him off the top of the hill. I mean, 
you go to throw someone down a hill, you're not there just to sort of have a bit of fun with them. Their intention is to kill the dudes. It's even me, right at the beginning. But Jesus goes through the crowd and goes on his way. So there's the story. This is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He tells us something of the presence of God amongst his people right now. And we know that it's a, it's a message of mercy because it's the year of the Lord's favour. We're having a year of the Lord's favour right now. A jubilee year of mercy. And it's about sight to the blind, good news to the poor, freedom for captives. Beautiful, beautiful message. That was the very beginning. It's kind of like, as we would often enough use these days, a mission statement. So Jesus was laying out his mission statement. This is what I'm going to be on about. The year of the Lord's day, good news. Good news to all. When we talk about time, we don't talk about now time. This is the time for this. We've got different ways of understanding the word time. So most of us calculate our time by our watches or on your phone or something. That's the sort of time that the time that's progressive, you know, this is this second, next second, next second, and so on. That sort of time is what we call chronos time. Chronos time. It comes from the Greek word. And so that's the progressive kind of time. So it's our watch time, if you like. Chronos time. But there's another word that we use in our faith for time. And the other word is kairos time. Kairos time. Both chronos and kairos are Greek words. So chronos time, progressive time. Kairos time. Is sort of the time at the right moment. You know? It's time of the right moment. So we're in a kairos time just by being together at this moment. This is the right moment for us at this, at this time. Does that make sense? So right now is a kairos time. Yes, it is. Quarter past ten on whatever day today is, there's a chronos description. But there is a time that is a special time, a kairos time, the right time. And we're in that right now. The kairos time is sort of God's time. We don't need to think about God as, you know, counting down the seconds and the hours and the days. God doesn't work like that. God is looking for the kairos time. We know something about what that kairos time is. Because at the very beginning, of, was it Albert? I can't remember his name. Anthony. When Anthony read the, the scriptures, it began with Jesus coming out of, he being in the desert for the 40 days and 40 nights, being tempted. And he comes out and we learn that he was full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. And he goes to the synagogue in that Full of the Holy Spirit. That in a sense is Kairos. God's time. How does God measure time? He measures it by way of the presence of the Holy Spirit. I had a sense of that last night at our opening mass. Must have been. Wasn't that beautiful? It was really true. Um, I, I, I've got to tell you, I, I get to cheat as a bishop. I didn't have to walk in the rain. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. The bishops get busting, um, so I, I didn't get wet. Uh, I'm grateful for that. But I think that was a moment full of the Holy Spirit last night. This is a moment full of the Holy Spirit. Because we're gathered for a purpose. We're not just here because, you know, well, let's turn up in Poland for the weekend. No. We're here for a reason. 
So this is fullness of Holy Spirit. This is Kairos. So what does Jesus do with this time? Well, as you know, he goes to his own local synagogue. It's like us going to our own parish church. That's what Jesus was doing. He was going to his own local place of worship. Where he grew up as a boy, and where he knew everyone, because it would have been a small village. Nazareth in those days would have been small. So he would have known everyone. Everyone, oh, there's Jesus, son of uh, Mary and Joseph. And actually, we heard it, didn't we? heard it in our scripture. It says, Isn't that just, you know, Mary, son of Joseph, a carpenter? Jesus goes to his own place. And that's where God's time became localized. You know that really big word we use now in our Christian faith? We talk about the incarnation. You heard that word? Incarnation. To become flesh. So God became flesh upon our humanity. He became one of us. That's when God, in His Holy Spirit, fullness of time, localized Himself. He became one of us in a local place. For Him, it was Nazareth some 2,000 years ago. For a lot of you, it was Finland, or Iceland, or Kuwait, or Syria, or the United States, or Germany, or where else? Iceland. Someone said, so we localize this kind of time, this now time, the right time. And that's what Jesus was doing. He was bringing his own divine self in a human way to the local world. So God always looks for a chance to be local. In, back in my diocese in Australia, I got a special way of defining parishes. I'm happy, happy to give it to you, you can share it around if you like. So I call our parishes local neighbourhoods of grace. What's a parish? A local neighbourhood of grace. So it's not just a building, this is a very beautiful church, a parish, isn't it? It's local. And you belong somewhere. We human beings belong somewhere. It's important for us. And so our faith is about belonging somewhere. In our local neighborhoods are the places where grace and flourish. Our local so we don't have to go overseas and come to Poland for this or do a to do special. But if we just come to Poland and take on what happens here over the next few days, and then you go home and go, whoop, done the poll, they have done that. Bit of a waste of time, really. That's certainly just turning the Kairos time into the Kairos time. We don't want the Kairos time. We want the Kairos time. We want the now to do this. So, what does Jesus say? He's localizing this great gift of faith. And Jesus says, now is this moment of good news. <coughs> Come to bring you good news, good news to the poor. Forgiveness. Sight. Freedom. Grace. So if you look up the, when you get a chance, look up chapter 4 of this gospel again. You'll see it, that is the things in Jesus' name in different ways. So we used it before, release to have this. That's forgiveness. Sight to the blind. Freedom to those in the The year of the Lord's faith, that's grace. So that's what Jesus is talking about. Good news. Forgiveness. Sight. Freedom. Yes. So this time, this special Kairos time, is an effective time. He localizes it, makes it effective. It's something that 
brings about something. So it's not just something that is a nice feeling. There's got a real action to it. There's a realness to what God's time is all about. Just think of the word freedom. What it might mean for us to be free of our burdens of sin. Or free from oppression from other people. Or free to be able to give ourselves to others. So there's real implications in travelling around in the box. Real implications. But here's the trick. You know the story when Jesus has all these angry synagogue members kicking him out, want to throw him off the hill, kill him, and he just gets through the crowd. Have you ever wondered how he did that? I do. I go, what do you think of that? How did he get out of this angry mob just walk away? Doesn't make much sense, does it? But there is good reason. You've got to think about it. it was inside the synagogue. And you've got to think about what a synagogue might have looked like 2,000 years ago. So if we look around the church at the moment, look at the windows. I want you to look at the windows. Check out the windows, check out the doors. What's the windows got in? Here we go, you looked at me, that's a problem. What do windows have?
Jesus on the side looking outside. You can imagine Jesus being joined by two crowds. There were those that were afraid of the hill. And those were going, yeah, at last, great news for us. God's time has come to us at last. Now is our time for this. And of course Jesus could get through the crowd, because that crowd, the ones who had been on the outside, are now welcomed in. They're now welcomed into the kingdom of God. They didn't need a building to confine them anymore. God, Jesus, is welcoming them into his life, into his kingdom. So of course Jesus was going to walk through the crowds. Because those who were rejected him, those who were attempting to kill him, were overcome themselves by those who now heard this good news, who now knew it was their time, their now time, their kairos. God had come to them. And he had set them free. Good news. They're my thoughts, but before we finish, I want to try and teach you this in just a little bit of a song. I like to sing. So I'm going to try and tell you. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm stopped talking theology. So you all wake up now. We're going to do this singing. And I, I need to um, get you to learn some words. So, so the words you need to know are Christ, our light.
So you might have your clothes down by the side. So your computer is now going to So this side, I'm going to teach you the correct word to say that. So it's moves our mercy. For those of you not real sure in English, moves is a word, a short word for who is. So you can say that. So moves our mercy. Moves our mercy. Say that again. Who's our mercy? 